I know you're getting a little bit impatient. Uh, we're like, what, four videos into this. I still have not told you what a polynomial is. I will, I promise, but we're not there yet. But we really are getting into the exciting stuff. And, you know, when I say exciting, I'm being serious, which really just tells you how weird I am. I'm a math tutor. It's okay. Uh, so what we're going to look at today is collecting like terms. So last time, if you remember, we looked at what a term was, which is some mixture of numbers and variables linked together by multiplication. So when I say this is exciting, we're getting into the, like, the real meat, the essential part of high school math, which is what can we do with an expression? And remember, an expression is... Uh, some, again, collection of mathematical operations that probably includes variables and uh, instructions for what to do. So something like 3x plus 9x. I know that's the one I want to use first. And we don't know what this is right now, but if someone were to tell us what value they wanted to use for x, like say uh, they told us that x was going to be equal to 2, then we could start to work. So this is going to be 3 times 2. Right? So that's an expression, and I'm going to get rid of this because it is not what we're talking about today. We're talking about what can we do with an expression even if somebody doesn't tell us what the variables are standing in for. And we've talked about this. It might be because it's my job to find out what the variable is part of a question, or it's part of a science project where I have to go out and measure the variable, or it's going to be that I'm doing something like a computer program where I'm never going to know what the variable, what value the variable is going to take on because it's going to be decided by somebody who's going to use my program maybe months down the road or even in another country. So in this case, we're going to talk about collecting like terms. And what I can say is this, if I have 3x and 9x, I can tell you with absolute 100% certainty that bit of multiplication and addition has the same answer as 12x. Absolutely guaranteed. And if you stare at that, you realize, yep, yeah, that's pretty obvious. Okay? Because uh, it doesn't matter whether I take this and multiply by 3 and then 9 and then add them together, or if I put them together and take that number and multiply it by 2. I will get the same answer. And if you're not sure of that, you know, get stacks of pennies or something and you can try that. But now, this also works in a more broader general sense. So what if, new question, I have instead of 3x plus 9x, 3x minus 5x. Well, it's harder to count on your fingers because th 5 is bigger than 3, but this has to be minus 2x. So this rule, so remember, this is a term, this is a term, and I can combine them into a single term because they are like terms. And the way the rule works is, so this is 1, the letter stays the same, So x, 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 2, the coefficient, which I can never spell, coefficient, which is the number in front of the variable, follows the addition or subtraction. So in these cases, watch, the x stayed the same, but what I did was I just did 3 plus 9 and got 12. The x stayed the same, I did 3 minus 5 and got minus 2. Make sense? Now, um, there are certain other variations. So what happens if I have 3x minus 2x? Let me put a little separator in here. Well. 3 take away 2 is 1, that's 1x, but having 1 of something or just having the something in English means the same thing 
in English means the same thing, so this one is optional. X and 1x are the same thing. And generally, we have this spirit of being lazy in math. So if I have a choice between writing 1x or just x and they mean the same thing, I'm going to choose the one that takes up less ink. As a general rule, there's sort of laziness that goes through all the math homework. Now, of course, what about if I have 3x minus 3x? Well, when you have something and you take away the exact same amount, you are left with nothing. Now, notice nothing is zero. Okay, my rule from before says that the letter stays the same. So I could have said the x, the x stays the same, and I do 3 minus 3, which is 0. But that's 0 times x, and that's okay, because 0 times anything is 0. And now you start to see, as we build things together in math, there's not necessarily only one way to answer a question, but whenever we come up with rules, we always come up with rules where even if there's more than one way to do it, the answer is always the same. So someone might do it in two steps, someone might do it in three steps, somebody might do it this way, somebody might do it that way, but as long as they're able to consistently get the same answer, then you're kind of onto something. By the way, this gets even more complicated. What happens if I have a decimal? What happens if I have 1.4x plus 3.2x? So the rule works just as well, right? And uh, you can imagine having like bags of something that are fractions full. Uh, so 1.4 plus 3.2, that would be 4.6x. Works the same. What about if I decided to go make something a little bit harder and I wanted to have, remember I said in high school we prefer fractions, one third x minus five sevenths x. Well, the x will stay the same. However, as I've warned you if you've watched the review series about fractions, you have a calculator that does fractions. So, I'm not even worried about that common denominator. I know that one-third take away five-sevenths is negative eight twenty-firsts, negative eight over twenty-one. Right? So, so far so good. That's collecting like terms. Now, what happens if you have unlike terms? So, what happens if I have two a plus three b? Think about it. Turns out the answer is nothing. This is as simple as it is going to get. Unless somebody is prepared to give me hints, like tell me something about like what the value for A is or what the value for B is, that's it. There is no, you know, people try and be clever. Remember, uh, write this in a different color, this is not right. You might want this to be two plus three is five and an A and a B go together to make an AB. This doesn't work. I mean, let's choose values for A and B. So I'm going to put 5 here and 6 here. Okay, so 2 times 5 is 10 and 3 times 6 is 18. So together this makes 28. Uh, and 5 times 6 is 30 uh, times 5 is 150. So if I did it this way, it would be 150, which is definitely not the same answer as 28. Okay? So just to, just, uh, actually I'm going to leave this here, I'm just going to, mm, actually I'm going to leave this here and just emphasize that it's not true, uh, and maybe we will tidy this up. So this is as simple as it gets. There is no way to scrunch this further. And that makes sense. If you have two apples and three bananas, it is not fair to say that I have five apple bananas. Now, you could say that I have, it is true that I have, you know, two apples and three bananas is five pieces of fruit, except now I don't know which ones are apples. Which ones. So I, what I've done is by trying to make this simpler, I have wound up 
with a new letter, I have made things more confusing, I now know less about the question I did before. So we, so we generally don't do that. So by the way, different letters just means not like terms. So if you have things that are not like terms, that's it. They're fine the way they are. Now what about if I sort of have a mixture? So I could do 2a plus 3b plus 5a. So it is true that two apples and five apples is seven apples and three bananas. That's true. So this is absolutely allowed. This is a good thing. What about if I put numbers inside? So I'm going to keep using more or less the same things. 2a plus 1 plus 3b plus 5a minus 9. Now this is starting to seem like a little bit of a jumble. There is one trick that you can do, which is remember that in addition, the order of the things you add does not matter. So 3 plus 5 is the same as 5 plus 3. That means I am allowed to write things first. So I can take 2a plus 3b. Uh, no, I don't want to do that, sorry. Plus 5a plus 3b plus 1 minus 9. There. So here, these two, 2a plus 5a, 7a, just this one, 3b, that's fine. And because a is a different letter from b, then that's going to stay separate. And 1 minus 9 is minus 8. Just like that. So I can always scrunch something long and complicated down to something simple. And the limit to how much I can squish it down depends on how many different letters are involved. So this one had an A and a B, so it was able to squish down to two things. This one had A's, B's, and numbers, which means it squished down to A's, B's, and numbers. Okay? Uh, the technical term for uh, the numbers that are part of expressions that don't have variables to them is constants. Right? Right? The number 8 is not a variable. It doesn't change. 8 always means 8 every day of the week. It's a constant. Whatever. Okay? Now, what about something a little bit more challenging? Because we know from multiplying in the last video that I could have x times x, x squared. What do I do with x squared plus x? Spoiler, nothing. And let's just try and work with an, uh, you know, an example. What might it be? Well, there's two of them, and there's an x squared, so maybe that's 2x. Or there's two of these here, and there's a 1 there that's kind of invisible. Maybe that's x cubed. Okay. Uh, maybe you do a combination of both. Maybe it's 2x cubed. I mean, those are all things that you might guess. So let's pick a number out of a hat, and let's say that we're going to let x equal 5. And all of this, we do this when we come up with new rules in math, is we want to sort of say, what might it be? But then you actually have to try examples and see if it actually works or not. The ultimate test of whether or not we've found good rules is whether or not they're true. So let's do the experiment. Uh, let's keep the same color. Uh, so this would be 5 squared plus 5, which is... 25 plus 5, which is 30. Now, what would that be? Uh, 2 times 5 is 10. Obviously not. Um, uh, let's see. 5 cubed is uh, 5 times 5, which is 25 times 5, is 125. That's obviously not 30. That's obviously not true. And uh, 2 times 5 cubed, well, that's 250. So every single one of these gives me an answer that's not 30. So every single one of these possible rules must be wrong. And the short answer is nothing can be done. There is no convenient way to combine those two together. There just isn't.
You can try and invent one. Lots of people have tried. So far, no one has succeeded. That doesn't mean that you won't be the first, but as far as we know, there isn't one. So what that means is it doesn't have to be just the letter that's the same. In order to be like terms, you have to match letter and exponent. So an x with a 2 and an x with a 1, or an x with a nothing, because to the power 1 and just the number is the same number, those are, again, not like terms. Okay? So let's just sort of go through... Um, I want So let's say I had something like 2a squared b cubed. So what might be a like term for that? So we'll make sort of a column for yes and a column for no. So one example of something that would match would be any number I want. So say 17 a squared b cubed. How about a negative number? Negative 3 a squared b cubed. How about a decimal? Negative 8.695 a squared b cubed. How about a fraction? Uh, 18 over 29 a squared b cubed. All of those are like terms, and I could keep the letters the same. So let's do this one. Let's do um, 2a squared b cubed minus 17a squared b cubed. And so I keep the letter part exactly the same. 2, take away 17, is minus 15. And that's what that simplifies to. How about no? Well, anything else. So what would not count is something like 2a, 6b. Even if I had the same letters, 2a cubed b squared. So that's a 2 here and a 3 here. That's a 3 here and a 2 there. Those don't count as like terms. Even if I have everything and a little bit extra, 2a cubed b squared c Again, not a like term. Unless the letters match up exactly, they're not like terms. They can't be added together. So, very, very simple rule. If the letters are uh, the same match, and by the way, sorry, I should say, if you get something that's not a like term, so let's take our first one, 2a squared b cubed, and let's take this one, plus 2a cubed b squared. And what do you do with that? The answer is nothing. It just sits there, which is totally fine. It's not, there is no rule that says that, you know, if you have something that has four pieces to it, that that should scrunch down and it should become uh, three pieces or one piece or two pieces. There is no rule. So sometimes something, uh, let's see, sometimes something that starts here as three pieces comes down to two. Sometimes, uh, sometimes something that starts as two pieces goes to nothing. There's no, there's no rule about how that is, so it's perfectly acceptable to have something that starts as two terms and just nothing happens. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and I think we're now two videos away from figuring out what a polynomial is, so we will get there. It's coming soon, and good luck with your math homework.